interesting or prestigious competition? The most pre- prestigious competition was actually the uh, the uh, Eggtoberfest, <laughs> and, and I did say Eggtoberfest. <laughs> Big Green Egg Headquarters puts on a cook every October in, in Stone Mountain, Georgia, and there will be about 500 cook teams, and we will feed anywhere from four to five thousand people that come through and and sample the food that you're cooking. Uh, And so that was the largest competition, the most prestigious, because it's the big daddy of them all when it comes to big green egg competitions. And, um, and we took first place uh, three years ago. Wow. Holy moly. I mean, thousands of people. That's so what, and and what was your dish uh, that you used to win, to win this competition? Wow. Uh, We had several, we did some, um, some, uh, Korean wonton, um, um, oh man, uh, pastrami. Um, and, and so we had uh, pastrami that we had put in wontons and, and, and deep fried on the big green egg. Um, and that, that was one of the dishes we did tri tip. So we had, uh, we had several tri tips that we reverse seared low and slow smoke at first up to, about 120 internal temperature, you know, really still pretty rare. And then we raise the temp on the egg up to about 550. And then we sear both sides for a few minutes um, and then slice it real thin and served it. Um, We, uh, of course, we had um, um, brisket egg rolls. Uh, We we did a lot of, we, we didn't have just one dish. We tried to serve up a variety and really show what the big green egg can do. Um, you know, their motto is the ultimate cooking experience. And it really is because you can go from low and slow smoke, high heat pizza, you know, like a brick oven pizza type, um, you know, uh, oven. And and it's all with charcoal, you know, it's all with, with charcoal and, and, uh, you can bake grill. I mean, everything on it. And so we really just tried to showcase that more than anything else. Excellent. And what was the, I mean, apart from winning this competition, then what, what happens if you win? What's the uh, prize here? Apart from knowing that you won, was there any other amazing or unusual prize that came out of this? Um, unusual, not, not necessarily. I mean, I, there, you know, um, the, there, we had several of us on the cook team. There were probably 15 of us on this cook team. Uh, and uh, I received a big banner. Everybody signed, including the the president and everyone involved at Big Green Egg. Uh, a big banner, you know, for the Egg Fest that uh, that was presented to me. And then, um, uh, you know, there were, you know, little things. We get, we got like a Big Green Egg, um, some accessories for the grill, some a, a Dutch oven, um, a. a Oh. Cast iron, Dutch there oven. There you go. Okay. So yeah. you, you get more supplies if you win this competition. Exactly. Yeah, yes, That's absolutely. Cool. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, that's really, really, really fascinating. And so would you say that you use this grill of yours? I mean, is it every day, three days a week? Or is it, you know, how, how often are you grilling? Every single day? So if if you would have asked me that question six months ago, it would have been every day. <laughs> So um, I was in a car wreck and broke both my arms back on the day before Thanksgiving. And Ooh la la. Ooh la, la. Yeah. Really? Oh, that's Yeah. yeah. So, so I've had a slow, oh. uh, slowly getting back to it, but I'm probably at three times a day uh, over the past couple, you know, month or so. But generally it's, I mean, it's all year round. I mean, I've cleared snow away to be able to, you know, light it up and, and do what we need to do. Awesome. Awesome. And how, and how, how does it light? Just how, how do you, how do you get it started? Yeah. Well that, and that's something um, that's kind of interesting as well, because um, you can use, cause the, the charcoal we use is not regular briquettes. Like a lot of people think of like a Kingsford briquette. That's not what we're using. We're using a lump charcoal, which is a wood that they burn in a kiln. And then it, it's, it's lump, like lumps of actual wood it burns very clean and hmm. creates very little ash and you can use um, like a starter stick. You can, uh, you can take a, a little bit of 
um, oil on a paper towel, stick in there and light it, and then it'll get the charcoal lit. But I actually have a little torch that I use. And so I light the torch, stick the <laughs> okay. torch in there and, and, uh, and have and, fun with uh, and, and, and hope you, you stick that's the torch right. in and, and hope and, and, ho- and pray is what you do. That, that's, yeah, that's right. that's right. Who doesn't like fire? I mean, come on. <laughs> also, who doesn't like fire? Oh, yeah. that's, who doesn't like fire? Okay. Who doesn't? Ah, that's going to be, that's okay. You gave me a good title. Who doesn't love, who doesn't like, who doesn't love fire? Ooh, that's I like right. that title. That's what this is called. Who doesn't love fire? Mm. At first, I'm actually, I'm not going to, actually, I never lie to guess. At first, okay, in the back of my good. mind, <laughs> as, in the back of my mind, I was almost going to name this episode. I refuse to eat Kasha because that would be pretty. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but no, no, I. But no, who doesn't love to play with fire? That's that's wait, that's that's a cool that's a cool title. All yeah. right. Well, um, yeah. I mean, that's that's really good for you know. In my in my own situation, uh, I happen for many reasons happen to live with my parents, and my brother, um, and my extremely old uh, and retired um, and sick uh, guide dog. Um, she's thirteen now and has has uh, several basically the the kidney failure and se- several different mm-hmm. health issues several different end of life issues basically so i'm taking care of her every day but my parent yeah my parents cook uh they sometimes my parents use our grill but they they prefer the gas grill you know where you buy the um the canister right. of gas you plug it in they prefer that that way um there's some it's it's pretty good you know but i can totally see how this particular green egg uh grill I, funny Strange thing to say, but funny you mentioned. I might, I might seriously need some more information about this particular grill because, uh, because my father's looking to get a grill and he, he's looking into something called like a Traeger or something like that. Traeger. Yeah, that's a pellet. Yeah. Yep, that's a pellet grill. Yeah, you're you're probably familiar with that. Have have you? Do you have any experience with those? Um, that yes, I do. And as in fact, I have a pellet grill, um, that is is a different brand, um, but. Um, they, probably the best way to cook chicken is on a pellet grill. Uh, right. some of the best chicken I've ever had has been on a, a pellet grill for some reason. It just seems to do really well. I don't like them when it comes to beef and, and some of the pork. Um, but, but they, but you can do a lot of really good things. A lot of people do great cooks on pellet grills. They're very easy. You know, you pour in the pellets, you turn it on and set the temp and then, it just, it just works. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, and so, so they, they work well, they, they, right. they can, um, but they're, they're definitely not my, I would take a pellet over a gas any day, but if I have the option, I would go with, with um, charcoal. Hmm. Yeah. That's, that's, that's interesting. That's, that's really interesting because the, uh, you know, I'm, I'm 28. So, you know, back when I was a boy, the charcoal made a lot, um, kind of made, made a bigger mess, you know? It was it, a, yeah. And, and there are, there are accessories. I mean, I wear gloves when I'm messing mm-hmm. with it. Um, and, but with this charcoal, the lump charcoal we talked about, you know, I'll fill up the, the, the basket of my charcoal basket in the, in the egg and I light it. And I'll cook a little while. And when I shut the egg down, you know, it's airtight. So it puts the fire out. And then when I go back to relight that grill, I don't have to add charcoal for a few cooks. I can just relight what's in there. And, you know, I'll get three, four cooks uh, before I even add any other lump charcoal again to it. Mm. And mm. it creates very little ash. So it, it's not as, as dirty um, you know, I mean, there's gonna, anytime there's, there's something burning, there's going to be, you know, uh, that possibility, but, um, uh, it's, it's not as bad as what most people think of, especially when you burn briquettes and you left with this huge pile of ash that you clean out every time. And it's not like that with these, uh, Kamado grills. Hmm. Well, that's really, yeah, this is, this is really fascinating. I think, I think without doubt. Um, when I when I tweet you this episode after it's been you know produced and set up in our station, I think I think I would like more information about this green egg uh, system that you have. It's really re- really yeah. fascinating. I would I would love to learn more about that technology because that's you know really- combine that with that flame boss I was telling you about, and it's mm. just about the same as a pellet grill because you can actually set the temp 
and once you've got it lit and walk away and it'll bring it up to the temp you want. So yeah, there, I will definitely talk more about that. Yeah. Oh, sure. Sure. That's, that's really cool. Really cool. All right. So um, now when you are not grilling, what are some things that you like to, you know, do uh, in, uh, in the kitchen? Uh, we have about, about four minutes until the break. Okay. Um, yeah, well, usually kitchen is, is really for me just for prep. So <laughs> if you're asking what I like, just, if I like to do in the kitchen, it's, it's really, uh, if I can do it outside, I'm going to do it outside. So, um, I, you know, kitchen is really just a place for prep for me. Um, but you know, unless I'm doing like a no bake cheesecake. So I love desserts. <laughs> so, uh, so I do, I do a lot of that, but, uh, you know, if I get away from cooking as a whole, um, you know, I, I love to be outdoors, you know, I love, you know, fishing and, and doing all kinds of things that I can outdoors for sure. Oh, that's so good. So wonderful. Yeah. For me, the outdoor hobby, um, my father and I did a lot. We, we went sailing a lot and that sailing is really, is really amazing. Um, ever since, um, and I, I, I do not talk about it on my podcast. You're going to hear, you're going to understand instantly, but, um, it'd be in light of the health thing uh in our country in around the world um we've i've had mm -hmm. to stay in a lot more so sure. this this whole year you know has been kind of a uh, you know type of thing type of thing but yeah um, yeah it's been rough just say, there you go so so before all this we would go sailing and we were we were a lot more active in the summer um for uh for personal reasons my location is is undisclosed that's another whole nother long story um but um wherever i am somewhere somewhere in north america we you know we have the, the super hot in the summer it's super cold in the winter uh anything else in the fall and the spring so um yeah. so i love i love those those outdoor outdoor activities in fact when i was much younger i skied i skied in the winter uh, yeah. so yeah that's and uh, what can you what can you tell us about? I believe your state is uh, Missouri, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. That's an interesting place. I've never been. What can you tell us uh, in the remaining two minutes? What can you tell us about about Missouri? You know, Missouri is it's very beautiful, actually. I mean, I grew up here. Uh, so, and because I could see as a child, I know what a lot of things used to, at least used to look like, but there's lots of, lots of lakes. There's lots of hills. I'm in the Ozark mountains, uh, nothing like the, um, the Rockies and certainly nothing like, you know, the Smokies or anything like that, but, uh, it's still kind of mountainous for, for this region. And, um, it's very hot and humid in the summer, very cold and a lot of ice in the portion of Missouri I live in, in the winter. And so, uh, you know, we do have spring and, and fall seasons, you know, so we don't go usually from one to the other. Um, but it's been very rainy this year. So that's kind of, mm. of course, you know, we've been kept inside anyway, but uh, the yeah. rain has uh, kind of dampened a lot of fishing trips as well. I can, yeah, that, that, but you know what, though, that's, and that is the, that is the blessing and curse with outdoor activities, that you're always, always at the weather's mercy, and in my yeah. side of the country, it's, I, I, I can always predict, and then I'm always wrong, it, you know, the weather, yeah, right. I, no, I, I kid, I kid you not, and listener, you're going to be shocked, Chris, you will, you will understand, once, I mean, this is looking back, it's hilarious, in a, in a sense, but it's just annoying as heck. You know, my father and I, we plan a sale. You know, I take off work that morning. A bit of a long story. I'm an online teacher. So I, I don't sign up for my classes that morning to, to, to work. We get out and we figure out that the meteorology, you know, station, they reverse the reports accidentally. They got all the, all the wind numbers were wrong, where they said it was high, it was low, where they said low, it's high. They, got, oh, they, they, they reversed it. They got the whole thing wrong, and then we couldn't sail. So that's, yeah. that must be, I, com I, mean, I mean, I don't fish, but I completely understand that, that frustration of yeah. dealing with weather. Um, yeah, does your, now, does your green egg work uh, if it's, uh, you know, complete downpour? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it will. Uh, there are certain caps because y you've got two vents and, and, um, and we, and we can get into this if you uh, need to take a break. Sure, but. sure, sure. So let's, 
So sure, sure. And I would I would love to hear more about that aspect of the technology. By the way, listener, my name's Aaron Richmond. Aaron Richmond. Uh, he's Chris Peltz. This is Aaron's opinion on all the plat on all of the podcast platforms, Caroline Radio and Blind Advocate Radio. As I like to say, Aaron's opinion, KCGN, 